You know, Wait a second. Wanna, we hold wanna... a second. Hey, Jordan. Jim Browder, can you come here a second, please? <laughs> Jim this Kelsey. woman is Trenny Casey. Oh my God, I'm such a huge and, New York fan. This woman cannot even talk I was because like, she knew you were coming on the show. Can you help her out in any kind of? You don't have a microphone, but if you want yeah. me to communicate anything, can you shake her hand? Can you walk over there? It's okay. We can wait till it's done. It's can making you do wait something? till it's done. No, no I gotta leave when you're done. My, Wait, I, don't go away. I want to say something my else. Dog, to you, I have to take my dog's poop to the vet. Oh, oh my god! So oh my god! Here we go. Nobody has a match made Look in at heaven. her face. <laughs> Look at her face. This is pathetic. The guy owns a restaurant. Who gives yeah. a damn what he does? So, okay, I'll put this back on. So, yeah. I told this story when I was. In seventh grade, Jordan, I put on saw the new Do you mind putting on the headphone over there? For I a saw new Jordan kids. Knight has just shown up early first, for a segment here. It was my first ever we're, concert we're, as a grown-up. Well, not a grown-up. I saw us at Alpine Valley. It's like us in Alpine Valley, we lost East this Detroit, show. Wisconsin. Go ahead. Uh -huh. I'm from Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we sat center, and I loved your shoes, so I made my, my mom. Shoes? I guess this I made my mom buy you shoe, buy me shoes that like you wore. But what year I, was this? Uh, I mean, I was in seventh grade, so probably 1988, 89, 90, somewhere in there. I graduated it's from sad. high school in 90. We were both I mean, very young at that time. We were both yeah. very young. But somehow Long I would suspect ago. that Jordan Knight has had these kinds of conversations probably Maybe more than hundreds once. of yeah, times. Yeah, like how many women my age are like, oh my God, Jordan <laughs> once, Knight. Once or twice. I once know. or twice, I a know. likely story. I it's a good thing my husband doesn't listen now, to this Now, Jordan, show. before you, uh, I don't even know why you're here this early, but in any case, yeah. before you go, you have some bite to eat this show, when cafe. we're at the library, our show streams on YouTube, we apparently have a record number of YouTube viewers today. not for talking about the patrons. I think it's probably because of the discussion about Biden's classified documents. Would you not agree? <laughs> oh, uh, everyone's tuning in for that. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. So I just wanted to run that by you. Okay, you're excused. You're going to be back in about 12 minutes. Can we hear it for clothes clothes Jordan today. Knight? Woo! He's here to talk about a restaurant, not the Trenny Casey problem here. Okay. Yes. By the way, I've never seen you red or Redder, I like know, a I'm lobster. Like, I don't ever, like, no. So no, toward no. the end of last year, Milton's Navarro restaurant closed after a two alarm kitchen fire. Luckily, no one was hurt. Now in the new year, Navarro is back open, and its co-owners are here at the Boston Public Library with beautiful-looking food. Oh this actually God. begins the Dorchester section of our show. <laughs> John King is going to join us from CNN in 20 minutes. But first, Dorchester's own Jordan Knight, a relatively new kid in the restaurant business, and Vance Welch, managing partner of Navarra and Abbey Park. Welcome to both of you. Hey, thanks for having now, us. Now, Vance, before we start, I want to read some of the posts on YouTube, obviously about you. He's an amazing man. <laughs> he is magical, listening from Denmark. And this one is Magic. really a tribute to you, Vance. I'm waiting for my baby daddy to come on TikTok. How did you become so Vance. popular, Vance? What it's are you incredible. Doing? It's really amazing. Okay. Well, <laughs> Vance is turning red now, like Trenny did an hour ago, I should say. Well, we did have a very embarrassing moment with Trenny Casey, who is our sports analyst, came in here and, and, and just about died when you came over and talked to her because she's been a New Kids on the Block fan forever and a day. But people do know you for your fame with uh, your brother and the other ma band members, but you are also now in the restaurant business. So how'd that happen? Um, it kind of happened by luck. Um, me and my wife, uh, we moved to Milton maybe 20 years ago or whatever. There was, there was actually no restaurants in Milton, it seemed like. Um, and we had to travel far and wide to go to a restaurant. And then w there was a restaurant that opened up. Abbey Park, which was in East Milton Square, and we started going to that regularly. And um, the food was great, the service was great, and um, we found out that Vance was owner and um, operator of that restaurant. And we got to know Vance, and the food, you know, the food was always consistent and everything, and um, there was um, some construction going on a couple um, buildings away, and, you know, I started to ask Vance, like, what's going on over there? He said, oh, we're, we're doing a new restaurant. And I was like, oh, that's really exciting. And um, later on, we talked about me being an, an investor, and he showed me the, um, the space. And uh, I, th I thought it was, like, just what Milton needed. One thing I was nervous about <laughs> was, it, it, it really was, um, because Milton didn't have, like, a kind of, like, a cool place, kind of like... It seems like something you would go to in the South End or downtown yeah. or something like that, but it was in the suburbs. Um, 
And um, he showed me the spot. And, and then I was like, but there's a restaurant like two doors down. I, like, and I was wondering, you know, why he was doing it. And then I was looking and I said, well, there's a Starbucks there and there's a Dunkin' Donuts there. And they're both busy. So I guess it'll work. So, uh, so um, and, and I knew Vance, you know, ran a tight ship. And, um, oh, and, and the, the same uh, executive chef was going to be working at the uh, new restaurant. So... I jumped aboard and, and, you know, I really feel like, you know, I, I got lucky by, you know, meeting Vance by happenstance and uh, through my wife, actually, she really kind of pushed, pushed the idea. <laughs> so, um, Vance, mm-hmm. I've been to Abbey Park. It's great, by the way. It's just fab- Were you nervous? I'm serious about having somebody who had no involvement in the restaurant business other than liking good food as a partner. No, I mean, I think Jordan brings a lot to the table for us. He's So to speak. Very <laughs> Thank you very much, yes. Yeah. So, no, not at all. I mean, I mean, we knew Jordan, and, we, you know, we became friends over the years, and that's, no. Before so, we so talk we about had, the food, we tell me. We need to find out, if, you know, like I said before, Trini, Trini Casey comes in here, she's beside herself. I mean, this must happen, this happened to you many times, I'm sure, over your career, that people see you or they recognize you, you so? and they're all excited. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I mean... Are people knocking on the window, seeing, finding out if the new kids are going to be playing in the back patio or anything? I mean, do you get a lot of, they, lot of uh, starstruck uh, uh, young kids and, and older kids yeah, a lot looking of, for them? We get, a, we get a, our, our share of uh, fans. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> hey, Vance, how did you make it through the pandemic? I mean, you've been, how, how was that? I mean, we've talked to a lot of restaurateurs here, some of whom didn't survive many of whom survived literally by a shoestring. And how did, how did it go for you? What'd you do? Well, we just, we got creative with takeout. And, and that's something that um, became almost like a, another business for us. It's something that um, we, we never closed down. We went right back to work. But then you have, you have a COVID, you survive that, and then you have a fire, which has got to be, so, well, you're the partner in the business there, Jordan. I mean, how, how depressing is that to a small business guy? It was, uh, I mean, it was, it was scary to, uh, to, to know that the place caught on fire. I drove down there and luckily it was, um, you know, one of the fryer laters somehow um, caught on fire and there was like, a, um, I guess the fryer laters have a chute to take the flames if they do catch on fire. Is that what it is? Yeah, it got, it, got for, it got caught up in a ventilation system. So, it, but it went up through the vent and it like burned a hole in the, in the roof. And uh, you know the, 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 you know the fire trucks were there, and, and I'm like, oh my goodness, you know. So I walked in, I saw Vance in there, and he was walking around, and it, m- most of all, it was like smoky, and the, and there was just water everywhere, and there was basically a hole in the roof, and uh, you know, luckily for us, Milton Fire came really quick and put it out. But yeah, for a small business, it's probably the most devastating thing that can happen, and luckily, it wasn't too awful. Okay, so, so we're not going to let him describe the food. We're going to let the uh, investor whoa, whoa. describe no, the food. What yeah. are these mushroom things I'm eating? Oh, you know delicious. what? I've never That's had delicious. I've never had the mushrooms, They're but really um, good. I, I swear. What's this thing right here? That's a tuna poke. Oh, am I talking to you, Vance, tuna, or am I talking to this tuna, guy? I mean, I don't I want to hear. You don't eat that either. You don't no. eat the mushrooms. You don't eat the tuna. No, but, what do you I, eat? but I guarantee you they're good. Um, but um, <laughs> I eat the chicken parm. I eat these. Chicken parm. Chicken, Absolutely. And what's chicken, that over what's there? Chicken parm meatballs, actually. Chicken parm meatballs, okay. What is that, Vance? I've had that That's the other day. That's what I'm taking home, Jim. See, I'm not a foodie. That's but pretty I, apparent. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I like the food. Um, That's the short ribs. Short ribs. Short ribs. I had that I two, the, two nights ago. Can you pass so, that over in so this direction? Kind of, Vance, this here. is kind of Italian. Is it Italian kind of. cuisine? Now, I, I know yes, the other sir. place is more American, yeah. but this new place is more Italian, right? Yep. Yeah. Now, you don't look Italian, and the name nope. Welch is not particularly Italian. <laughs> so where do you get off doing the Italian food thing? Well, our culinary partner, Tony Dorenzo, he's a sh- he was the chef that yeah. we opened with, and he's... Uh, He's Italian. And his, okay. gran- and his grandmother taught him how to cook when he was a young boy, and she's from she's still, Italy. Is, she, yeah. is somebody, is a mother or grandmother still helping out in the restaurant? Did I read that yeah, somewhere? Yeah, she, yeah, she was, uh, well, she had been. She, she used to make all our meatballs. She so, did. <laughs> so it's the real deal. Yeah, Italian. So, why, so why is Italian, I mean, it's like every time we turn around, you know, people love Italian restaurants. I mean, I love Italian restaurants. So what is it about Italian food? Are you Irish? I'm Irish. There's not many Irish food places, Vince, are no, there? No, there is not. No, there's, no, there's not very many. There's not many at all. So, Vance, what's wrong with the Irish food? What's great about the Italian food? 
I don't know. I think that we would have to. Yeah. I mean, I think that if you look at the the Italian foods that are on the menu, they've been, they've been popularized here and as more American, it's yeah. Italian American, and and that's pretty much the core of our menu. You know, we're trying to have a serious discussion about a restaurant that just reopened, survived COVID. Baked, baked potatoes. No, wait a second. Before you get to baked potatoes, here's crazy. <laughs> Public radio has never been more popular. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little insulting to us. Here is Hungry for Jordan with oh, a couple gosh. of emojis. Where, and from Sao Paulo, Brazil, his voice, oh my God, I melt every, every time. I mean, this is on, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's really... Well, you know, really, we have, you know, can I tell you what we have? What? Because, by the way, obviously your goal is to get people in your restaurant. And one of the promotions you did was fabulous, fans. We have a photograph uh, actually, some video. That's right there. Of Jordan at the here he is at the restaurant. Yeah. Now, why did you decide? <laughs> it, it gets hot in it gets hot in the restaurant. <laughs> so that's why you decided with to take all, your shirt off, right? Yeah, yeah. With all the you know, the cooking that's going on. Exactly. And, and, and that's me your... rubbing my belly <laughs> exactly. uh, because I just had a, 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 a great meal. <laughs> Um, I think salmon piccata was what I ate before, <laughs> uh, before I did that number. There. Well, you're looking pretty but Jordan, good. But you know, Jim has used to have. He's no longer doing. He used to have kind of a, a modest TV show here at well, GPH. Was on every night at seven o'clock. Really modest. Well, it was you know it was not like millions and millions of people no, tuning in. And you know we'd go someplace sometime some event we had to go to and people would come in and say, Oh Jim, oh Jim, oh Jim, you must get that all the time. So I wonder how you handle life. You're out for dinner with your wife and your kids. Um, or if you're just walking down the street, I mean, is it a pain in the neck or are you okay? Um, for the most part, 99% of the time, it's just fine. Um, it's kind of like, you know, it, it's, it really is. It's an honor for people to, to recognize me. And it's like, it's, it's better than that than they don't recognize me, right? <laughs> okay. Um, but no, early, early on in like 88, when we just like hit the scene, it was, um, it was, it was kind of crazy, and and I would say at that time it was a little over, it was overwhelming. Yeah. Now it's not overwhelming. People are, people are calmer now, and they just want to say hello, take a selfie, okay, talk a little bit, Jordan, whatever. What are you talking about? This woman uh, Jessica is watching on YouTube. She just saw the photograph. <laughs> Here's what she posted: Let me at those short ribs. I mean, <laughs> I mean this. Is, this is not our normal guest kind of uh, experience here. So, but, so Vance, yeah. you're, by you're, the way, the short ribs, Vance. Let me just tell you, are spectacular. Yeah, the mushrooms are they fantastic too. They are really too. spectacular. So, so we, we, I mean, were you like a a, a new kid on the block? Oh my God! A guy being a guy. I mean, I, I, mean, I could be wrong. I thought more girls. Yeah. No. Yeah. Right. And I, maybe the guys weren't quite so enthused. I'm gonna guess not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. We're guys. We're talking to the two guys, uh, Jordan uh, Vance, uh, Jordan Knight, and uh, Vance Walsh, who have uh, Abbey. Well, Abbey Park is Vance's, and obviously Novara is uh, reopened after. Uh, this uh, fire, you're back in business, right? Yeah, and I also am now part of uh, Abbey Park. Oh, you are as part well. of the Abbey Park. Yeah, yeah. So you're not. Is this a restaurant deal? For, I mean, is this the beginning of more of you involved in the restaurant business, or is this a two and done kind of deal? I, I mean, I don't have huge aspirations. I like that. I like the group that that we have, and it's like they're both in East Milton Square. I like that it's in you know my town. So um, I would say that's that's about it. You know, I'm, I don't have huge aspirations to, let's franchise, let's take over the world. No, I, you know. Can you pass me the meatballs or whatever? So, absolutely. <laughs> so I think it's fair to say that East Thank Milton you. Square has gotten much hipper the last few years, huh? Yes, it has. Are you from Milton, Vance? Quincy. Oh, I, Quincy. Yeah. Oh. Close enough. Yeah. Quincy's yeah. gotten kind of hip yeah, lately, Quincy's, too. I was Quincy's stunned wrong. when I went down there a couple of days ago to go to a restaurant, actually, and the whole place was lit up. Christmas lights, it did have kind of a little bit of a Newbury Street feel, you know what I mean? Yeah, it really has yeah. come along. Yeah. Okay, so what is this thing? That's, oh, espresso martini. Is, oh, my wife These are great. loves that. Wait, yeah. this is an espresso martini? Yeah. Yes. It's like a gallon. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Throw it on ice, you'll set. be happy. <laughs> well, Marjorie's never been happier. So, you know, Jordan, yesterday, Marjorie is obsessed with the monarchy. And yeah. yesterday, she forced me to discuss Will and Harry, two brothers who are not getting along. Yeah. Apparently, you get along pretty well with your brother. Mm -hmm. That'd be Jonathan, who happens to be in this band of yours, yeah. sold only 70 million records, if you're counting. 
Here he is, uh, this is B. Jordan, speaking about his older brother, Jonathan, on an episode, Jonathan, on an episode of HGTV's Farmhouse Fixer, okay. in which they move and renovate a family home. Here it is. Is this one I John tear? has always been the, the one with the, the, the big heart. That's why we get to have these moments together, because of you, you know, because of your... your <laughs> your, <laughs> your heart, you know, your spirit, it, it pulls us all in and brings us together. And we're so lucky to have you. You are choking up in that deal. What's that I about? Was. Um, well, it, it's true. My brother is like, you know, he's kind of the heart of the family. Besides my mom. My mom is the heart of the family. He's, I would say he comes in second. But, uh, um... He is, he is. He like he just loves us all together. And he, my brother wears his heart on his sleeve, and um, he you know he has this show on HGTV, and he's asked me a number of times to be in scenes with him and um, jump in on, on the show with him. And uh, I guess at that moment I was feeling uh, just so uh, proud of him because he's he's been wanting to do a, a show like that for a long time. And uh, he just kept pushing and pushing, and he would get an offer, and he said, no, they're trying to sell me short, or I don't like it as much. And he just kept going, and now he has a hit TV show, and I, I was just really proud of him. It's like this old house for farms, right? I mean, it's a variation on a theme, isn't it? I would say, yeah, renovating old farmhouses. What's with the Dorchester kid in farms? I don't quite... Uh, what, you know what is funny? I, you know, I, we were like... A, we lived in Dorchester, but we lived in a big Victorian house, mm -hmm. And uh, we, there was a barn attached to, oh. not attached, but on the property. And we had like animals, like goats and stuff like that in, in Dorchester. Dorchester. Yeah. We were like, we were looked at as a very eccentric family, um, <laughs> you know, rightly so, I think. But um, John was always the one that kind of stayed home and kind of was like, he was like the farm boy in the city. Um, and my parents, they're both from Canada and... Uh, their relatives and they 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 come from farmland basically the farmland in Canada. We're speaking with Jordan Knight of New Kids on the Block family restaurant tour Vance Waltz about their recently reopened joint venture Novara in Milton. You know for people. Excuse me, Robin says I think Vance is cute too. So you're including Vance, this Vance. Vance, Vance is very cute. I want to be Vance. Clear. Vance, Vance, that. Yep. Vance. <laughs> Vance. Yep. So so for people that don't know. Tell people how you guys all got together, you and your brother and Donnie Wahlberg, Joey McIntyre, Danny Wood. How this how this happen when you were like little preteens? Um, well, uh, we all went to elementary school together, the Trotter School in Roxbury. Did and you have to wear uniforms then? Did they make no, you wear the khaki? No, pu pu public school. Okay, before that. Okay. Yeah, it was a public school. It is still, I think it's still around. Um, so we all went, we we're all from Dorchester. Um, and uh, uh, a producer, uh, Maurice Starr from Roxbury, who started New Edition, he wanted to start another group. And he was looking for um, some, some young guys with, who sang and danced. And um, um, he first came across Donnie. Um, and Donnie uh, rapped. And he really liked Donnie and uh, Donnie's vibe. And um, Donnie then, um, because I, I used to sing in the uh, school choir, and I sang in my church choir uh, when I was really young. And uh, he just gave me a call and said, you know, this guy Maurice, he wants to start a pop group. And I was like, pop group? He's like, yeah, you know, um, it's kind of like New Edition. And, you know, I was a big fan of New Edition. And um, I, he took me over there to meet him and uh, went up to his house. And he had a couple records that he already had planned for us. Uh, for this new group that he wanted to start, and he uh, wanted me to sing a few lines from the song. So I sang a few lines, and he was like, yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> You're in, kid. And, and how old were you? <clears throat> I, I was uh, 14. 14? Yeah, I was 14. So you went from living in Dorchester in the big Victorian house, mm -hmm. you know, family there, 14 years old, singing in the church choir and the school choir, to like international fame and in how long? Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I, when I was 14, I was more like, I was kind of a street kid. I was like breakdancing and stuff like yeah. that at that time. But, and then it also took us 
It took us four years to get a hit on the radio. So we were like working. We did like, I was telling Vance earlier, we like, we probably performed at the Boston Public Library. We performed everywhere. We performed at my nephew's two-year-old birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> it, honest to God, we yeah. performed everywhere and we really um, made our bones and um, we wouldn't say no to, to an offer. Um, we did it all for free. We just like... We wanted to get our act together. We put out an album and totally flopped. Um, and then the, the, the record label was like, you know, um, we don't know if we want to keep you guys on or we should change producers. And our producer was telling us this. And we said, no, Maurice, no, 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 no. We're doing it with you, doing it together. We did another album, put it out. It was like the, the, the first single was almost ready to flop, basically. And then one station in Florida picked it up and, and called our record company and said, you guys have a hit. You have a hit. This song is blowing up the radio. And then they... Uh, Florida, like, not Boston. No, in Florida, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no hometown attachment? Well, to we, had some, we had some love guys? here. W-I-L-D, okay. AM station. Yep. Um, so they gave us a lot of love. Um, it was harder to get on Kiss 108. Um, but they, they, they helped out a little bit. And... Um, Matty oh. Siegel was 50 then when that started, by the way. <laughs> hey, be, when you're a 14-year-old kid and you're playing, or someone says 40 years from now, you and your buddies from town are going to be playing together, what would you have said? I would say no way, no way. What was that like uh, recently? You were apart like more than a decade, right? And then you did this most recent thing, right? Yeah, we were, um, we kind of disbanded in, shoot, not when 19, 1993 or four or something like that and we got back together in 2008 um so we were apart for a while we always kept in touch but we were you know yeah we took some time off and so how great was that when you were doing it again recently i mean that has to feel great doesn't it it was it was pretty intense our first show was in toronto canada and um it was always a big market for us and uh we went up on this like lift and um, we appeared, and uh, all we saw was flashes, and oh, it was God. just like it was it was overwhelming. It was in, it was really intense. And um, we started off uh, Live Nation. They they booked us for 14 shows. That was in 2008, and we've done we've sold maybe you know over two, three, four million tickets since. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so uh, in addition to that, you have a pretty good restaurant. The food is fabulous. It's fans. fabulous. I've tasted everything. <laughs> everything from the mushrooms to the, to the short ribs to the, uh, to the fish. Oh, we didn't taste. Before you go, let's taste the dessert really quickly. What is this thing? Chocolate mousse. Of course. Chocolate it is. mousse. Chocolate mousse. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, my God. And let me tell you, you don't know Marjorie well. Yeah. This espresso martini, a gallon here is going to be blown right. by tomorrow morning. Yeah. Oh. Trust me, there is no... It's an Irish slur there, Vance, I was, was saying. Was Irish Irish slur. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, hey. uh, Jordan, it's great to meet you. Vance, great to meet you. Good Very luck good with the restaurant. We're going to check it out really soon ourselves. Thanks so much, and good thank luck you. with everything. Yeah, thank, thank you, guys. Sure. Thank you very much for being here. We Thanks, everyone. With Jordan.